You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for Bloodroot, Sanguinaria canadensis. Most people notice bloodroot when it blooms in rich woods in the spring, prior to leaves growing on trees. If you know where bloodroot has grown in previous years, you can find this plant when it first pops out of the ground. At this point, it's about one inch tall. Notice the single leaf with its strong veining on the underside. See how it curls around the rising flower stalk and developing flower bud. The underside of the leaf may be tinged a purple color, or it may be green. As the plant grows upward, the leaf opens out to reveal the flower stalk and flower. This grouping of bloodroot plants shows how each plant grows and flowers at different times from its neighbors. There are both budding as well as open flowers in this image. The two pale green flower sepals separate and drop off. The white petals begin to spread apart. And the central portion of the flower is revealed. Sometimes the plants grow far apart from each other. Other times the plants are close together in a group. When flowering, the plant is about three to six inches tall. As the bloodroot flower ages, its petals may become more translucent. And the petals drop from the flower stalk, especially on a windy day or after a hard spring rain. Let's look more closely at the center of the flower. As the flower opens, the stamens are clustered upright in the middle. When the flower opens more fully, the golden stamens expand outwards too. Now we can see the single pistil with its divided stigma and its fat ovary at the lower end of the pistil. A bloodroot plant typically consists of one leaf and one flower. If the plant has lived long enough to develop a many branched rhizome, it may produce multiple pairs of one leaf and one flower from each rhizome branch. The leaf stem and flower stalk arise separately from the plant's underground rhizome. Both look fleshy and may have overtones of red, gold, or purple tints. Bloodroot leaves exhibit a variety of shapes. A young plant, say a one-year-old, has a small, simple leaf. These young plants have bright red leaf stems. During the early weeks of bloodroot's annual life cycle, the leaves have thick veins on the underside. The leaf veins radiate from the point of attachment to the stem. This is palmate venation. The remaining veins are netted in between the primary palmate veins. The spring leaves on older plants, say a three-year-old plant, show some rounded lobes, primarily with one stronger lobe defined opposite the leaf stem attachment point. As the weeks go by, the leaves on even older perennial plants evolve with more lobes, as many as five or six lobes with deep clefts on each bloodroot plant's leaf. Returning to the flowers with their dying petals. After the petals and stamens drop off, the flower stalk remains, topped by its fertilized ovary. At this stage in the annual cycle, the plant still has two above-ground parts, the leaf and the flower turned into a seed capsule on its stalk. The bloodroot leaf looks as if it continues to protectively surround its seed capsule. However, as the leaves grow larger, they also rise above the seed capsules until the plant stands 9 to 12 inches tall. While we wait for the ovary to develop mature seeds, we can see the seed capsule begin to fatten. Let's open one of those seed capsules before it may be fully mature. Here we can see all the new bloodroot seeds, each with a bit of white stuff. The white is the eliosome, which is a food cherished by ants. The ants take the eliosome with its attached bloodroot seed to their nest. 
After the ants eat the eliasome, the seed remains as ant trash in a perfect environment for overwintering and later sprouting. Let's check on the seed capsules and see how they are progressing. Uh-oh, it looks like we may have missed the opening event. Ah, uh, here are a couple seed capsules, which still have some seeds in them. Look, here's another one. Let's look more closely at the seeds. Oh yes, look at their perfect roundness, complete with an eliasome, which connects the seed to the capsule's inner ridge. Some of the seed capsules look torn in half, as if they were ripped open across the middle of the capsule. Others look like they unzipped as they split open. After the seed capsule opens and its seeds are dispersed, the entire stalk and remaining capsule turns brown and shrivels. Meanwhile, the bloodroot leaf remains green for a while longer. Some leaves begin turning yellow in late spring, some in the summer, and some in the fall. You can tell the difference between a very young plant and an older plant by the size and shape of its leaves, just as we observed during the spring season. Now, it's time to investigate the reason for bloodroot's common and scientific names. Let's sacrifice one plant and dig up its root. The leaf stem is fleshy and has a red tone. Just below in the dirt, the red stem turns more golden. The root is a rhizome with small roots along its length. This image shows both the leaf stem and the remains of the flower stalk. Slicing diagonally across the rhizome, the bright red interior gleams like blood. Sanguis is Latin for blood. This root has medicinal properties when correctly prepared and used by a knowledgeable herbalist. However, it is also quite toxic. Lastly, bloodroot exhibits plant variations. Generally, a flower will have eight to 10 white petals. However, it may have another layer of petals, which results in as many as 12 to 16 petals. As we saw earlier, the stamens consist of stocky white filaments topped by golden anthers. Sometimes those stamens are thinner and seem to wave or twist around the central pistil. If you see one of these variations, you'll know it's still the same plant. It simply grew a bit differently. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Sanguinaria canadensis, also known as bloodroot. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of bloodroot, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.